Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about finding the domain for this function, the square root of x plus the square root of x minus 1. The idea for finding the domain for this function is that we are going to treat the two square roots as separate functions. So that means we are going to find the domain for the first function, the square root of x, and then we also need to find the domain for the square root of x minus 1. And then what happened is that we are going to graph both domains on the same number line and see where they overlap. And that will be our domain for this function f. Okay, so let's get started. So first, we are going to consider the first function right here, the square root of x. And so for square root of x, we know that if we plug in a negative number in here, then we are going to get imaginary. But for real value functions that we only want the stuff inside the square root to be non-negative. Non-negative means what? We require that x to be positive or zero, so greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the domain for the square root of x. And then the other one is that we are going to consider the second function. So this square root of x minus one. So we are going to get the square root of x minus one here. And then what happened is that we are going to set up an inequality. The stuff inside the square root must be greater than or equal to zero, just like what we have in the um, for the first function, so we are going to get x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Now, solving this inequality, we will simply just get x is greater than or equal to 1. So now we have the domain for the square root of x minus 1. What happens right now is that we are going to just graph both on the same number line. So we are going to draw the number line here first. So this is the x axis. Okay. And then now graph this one. So there was a zero on here. So let's plot the zero on here. And then there was also a one. So that's another endpoint. So we can put the one here. And then now what happened is that we are going to just graph each domain separately on above the number line. That will make it easier for us to find the actual domain for the function f. So what happened is that for x greater than or equal to zero, we are going to uh, include the zero. Okay, so we're going to put a solid dot here. Why? Because there was an equal sign. And then greater than zero means that we are going to shade the right side, right? So we are going to have shading the right side. So that means we take all the values greater than or equal to zero, including the zero. Okay. And then now for the second one, for the second one, it's going to be what x greater than or equal to one. So that means we are going to include the one. Okay, include the one. And then what happened is that we are going to take everything on the right side of one because it's greater than one. So anything that's greater. So we have this here. And so make sure that when you draw the arrows, don't just draw it too short because you will not be able to see the overlapping region. So the, uh, the better way to do it, I mean, the best way to do it is to actually just draw it all the way to so that the arrows all line up at the same spot. Right. So then now you can see that this is the part that they, uh, the two domains overlap. So that would be the domain for our function. So, um, let's just show it here. So you can see that it's actually all the stuff that are overlapping. Is that okay. And so now you can see that the one should be included because the one, there is a solid dot here. And, uh, for square root of x, one, is also okay, right? You can see that the square root of x is defined at x equals one, so one should be included as well. And so right now we can uh, shade it directly on the lumber line. So we have the solid dot on the one, and then we take everything that's greater than one. So based on the shading, we can actually write down the domain. So let's write down the domain here. Then we are going to get what? Starting with the one. We have one with open brackets. It's really because we are including the one, right? So we need to have the, the bracket here because we need to include the one and then comma. And then we go all the way to positive infinity. So we are just going to put infinity here. And then because infinity is not an actual number, we cannot really include that, right? You can think of it this way. So you can just put parentheses for infinity. We always put parentheses. Okay, so that's the domain for this function f. And that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.